Today, Jacqueline and her husband are preparing fresh meat, a variety of vegetables and spices. Friends and family are coming. This is a special meal. Normally, they would eat only ugali for dinner. Ugali is a traditional Kenyan dish made from white maize flour and water with little nutritional value. But how come in this region of Kenya, Naivasha, with plenty of fertile land, a large freshwater lake, a vivid flora and fauna, its inhabitants still suffer from malnutrition? In Puri, the lake in Naivasha is a huge resource for this surrounding community. Hundreds of fishermen set sail every morning to catch the fish that their wives will later sell at the local market. But according to local fishermen, the introduction of more effective fishing techniques by foreigners has led to overfishing and threatens their livelihoods. Most other people that live near the lake depend primarily on agriculture for their income or to feed their family. Over the past decade, more and more farmers have been planting only hybrid maize as it promises them higher profits. Although cattle and goats are everywhere, not everyone can afford them. Many Kenyans only eat animal products irregularly. Milk consumption is widespread, especially amongst children, but other fermented dairy products like yogurt are mostly consumed in the upper middle class. Overall, many people in Naivasha region have a, a fairly unbalanced diet, particularly children. They are often affected by malnutrition through lack of essential vitamins and minerals. The main problem lies with food systems, meaning the production, processing, consumption and uh, distribution. And um, today's uh, food system is highly unsustainable, mainly focused on profit maximization and uh, pro benefiting very few people. A good example for the one-sided focus is the flour production for the European market around Lake Naivasha. Much of the land around the lake is occupied by floriculture, which depends on irrigation. We have to organize the production, processing, distribution and consumption of food and agricultural products in a more sustainable way. Besides profits, we should also look at people and the planet. Food systems should allow for a fresh, nutritious, affordable diet for everyone. Natural resources should also be used in a more sustainable way for future generations. One way of doing this is by reintroducing indigenous vegetables and crops that have been largely cut out by staple crops such as maize for many decades. And ECDPM is now leading the multidisciplinary SAS project. SAS stands for Sustainable Agri-Food Systems Strategies and it is exactly looking at how we can reintegrate these neglected vegetables and crops. One farmer that is still cultivating indigenous vegetable crops is Francis Nigiri. His farm counts hundreds of different species and varieties, creating a diverse and balanced ecosystem. Besides, Francis has become a well-known advocate for biodiversity and organic farming in his community. We can say there are three benefits. One is uh, food security. When I have them, I don't have to worry about the food to put on the table to my family. Second, uh, we have a benefit of uh, health. Those indigenous things have very high nutrition value. So by consuming it, I will keep out, or I will, I will not have so many diseases. Again, number three benefit is also maintaining my culture. Most of these things were, were cultivated by my forefathers. So when I'm uh, saving them, I'm also maintaining my culture and I'm proud of that. But despite the striking benefits of indigenous products, they seem to appear less and less on people's plates. If you look on monetary value, then you may not have a lot of interest in maintaining indigenous things because it has no market. These things, I produce myself, I save them, 
even put in the packets uh, of the sin savers and we exchange by, by the, with our fellow farmers but it is illegal for me to sell the government says that I should be licensed to sell though these are indigenous sins they are of high quality they are nutritious but the law does not allow me and that's why we don't get maximum profit of our work organic farming for smallholder farmers like Francis, the administrative barriers to create a profitable business from sustainable farming are simply too high, but not for everyone. I'm passionate about growing things organically. We grow about 65 different fruit, vegetables and herbs at our organic farm on the west shore of Lake Naivasha. The indigenous vegetables are important to us um, because our farm workers prefer them to a lot of the other vegetables that we grow on the farm um, and also um, amongst our consumers in Nairobi we have quite a lot of African families and, and they like to add the indigenous vegetables to their weekly palate. Alex's farm shows that ecology and economic viability can go hand in hand but for the most vulnerable Kenyans who would need these nutritious products the most they remain inaccessible. Uh, most of our consumers are middle class. Um, we do have to charge a slight premium on our vegetables because they are produced organically. Fresh indigenous products are available at specific markets, but food processing, which could help reduce hunger during the dry season by making dried or fermented vegetables available for longer at local markets, remains a big problem in Kenya. Hello, my name is Veronica. I own a farm shop here in Naivasha, and we do the preservatives of the surplus from the local farmers. Processing is still the problem with people because they still don't know, they don't have the know, they lack the knowledge how to do them. But uh, when people come to my place, because there are a few which have learned already how to do, I can show them how to make them. One of the only processing facilities for indigenous products in Kenya is Margaret Commons Maize Foods. Maize Foods is a food processing company involved with uh, mainly two products. Product, product units. One is the spices and the second sector is ethnic foods and under ethnic foods we are processing mainly dehydrated African leafy vegetables. Initially when we uh, developed the product we were targeting uh, East African population in the diaspora because we knew that if they, if they live outside Kenya they don't have access to this vegetable. Although we were successful in the diaspora we realized that there was a market for the same product in, majorly in the big cities like Nairobi and Mombasa. And the type of consumers are middle upper, surprisingly, because these kind of consumers don't have time to make the long preparation process. But for Jacqueline and her family, these products remain unobtainable since they rely on cheap products from their local markets. A substantial shift in policies is needed to make diversified diets affordable for everyone.